or whose love in a humble service for the weight of human need, who upon the cross forsaken offered mercy's perfect deed. We your servants bring the worship, not of voice alone, but heart, consecrating to your purpose every take a moment to call to mind those times in our lives when and where we have sinned and to ask our God for mercy and for forgiveness. And so we pray, Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. The Almighty God, have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us all to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so we pray. O God, who founded all the commands on your sacred law upon love of you and our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may, we may merit to attain eternal life, and we ask this through Christ our Lord. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. The wicked say, Let us beset the just one, because he is obnoxious to us. He sets himself against our doings, reproaches us for transgressions of the law, and charges us with violations of our training. Let us see whether his words be true. Let us find out what will happen to him. For if the just one be the Son of God, God will defend him and deliver him from the hand of his foes. With revilement and torture, let us put the just one to the test that we may have proof of his gentleness and try his patience. Let us condemn him to a shameful death, for according to his own words, God will take care of him. The word of the Lord. The Lord upholds my life. The Lord upholds my life. O oh God, by your name save me, and by your might defend my cause. O oh God, hear my prayer. Hearken to the words of my mouth. For the haughty have risen up against me. The ruthless seek my life. They set not God before their eyes. Behold, God is my helper. The Lord sustains my life. Freely will I offer you sacrifice. I will praise your name, O Lord, for its goodness. The Lord upholds my
A reading from the letter of St. James. Beloved, where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there is disorder and every foul practice. But the wisdom from above is first of all pure, then peaceable, gentle, compliant, full of mercy and good fruits, without inconsistency or insincerity, and the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace for those who cultivate peace. Where do the wars and where do the conflicts among you come from? Is it not from your passions that make war within your members? You covet but do not possess. You kill and envy but you cannot obtain. You fight and wage war. You do not possess because you do not ask. You ask but do not receive because you ask wrongly to spend it on your passions. The word of the Lord. the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Our reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus and his disciples left from there and began a journey through Galilee but he did not wish anyone to know about it. He was teaching his disciples and telling them, the Son of Man is to be handed over to men and they will kill him. And three days after his death, the Son of Man will indeed rise. But they did not understand the saying and they were afraid to question him. They came to Capernaum and once inside the house, he began to ask them, what were you arguing about upon the way? But they remained silent. They had been discussing among themselves on the way who was the greatest. Then he sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, If anyone wishes to be first, he shall be the last of all and the servant of all. Taking a child, he placed it in their midst, and putting his arms around the child, he said to them, Whoever wishes receives one child such as this in my name receives me, and whoever receives me receives not me, but the one who sent me. The Gospel of the Lord. About 10, 12 years ago, I was uh, stationed at St. Anne's in Manlius as pastor. <clears throat> and there was a, a man there, his name was Joe. And Joe had struggled with some mental health issues for most of his life. Joe had been diagnosed with cancer. And Joe did not have a lot of family or friends, so the parish kind of rallied around him. I remember asking Joe this question one particular day. I said, you know, is there anything that I can do to help you? And not knowing what his response would be, he says, well, you know, you can, you can take me to my chemo sessions. So we made arrangements and a schedule and I would drive Joe to his chemo sessions. The first time he got in the car, I'm not the best driver and we're driving from Manlius to, uh, to, his, uh, to Krauss where the chemo was. And I remember that the entire time <clears throat> I'm looking at him on the, on the passenger side and he thought that there was a driver's ed break on his side. He was very, very nervous. We arrived, <clears throat> he received the treatment and several hours later we're coming back and he was very, very quiet. As we got to his apartment, he opened the door and he said, thanks, Father, for bringing me. But before he left, he put his head in the, in the window and he says, you know, I know that this cancer will take me and someday I'm going to die from this cancer, but I will never drive with you again because I'm certain that I'll die with you first. I think <clears throat> that moment with Joe uh, was extraordinary, one, because of his honesty. But it's funny, after we had that conversation, I remember the next day I went to his apartment and we prayed. And he taught me something about the importance of being centered in our lives on Christ. And so Joe said, Father, I'd like to, to pray for both of us. And I said, that sounds great. I, I'd love for you to pray. And so he prayed, and the first thing he prayed for was that, that I would be a better driver. And um, I'm not sure God has heard that prayers, but the second thing that he prayed for, he prayed almost verbatim. This is what he said. He's got, he said, God, thank you for the gift of this life that you have given me. Thank you for the gift of the struggles that I've had. 
I ask that you always walk with me in good times and times of challenge and help me to recognize your presence in the midst of the chaos. Joe taught me a lot uh, in those several weeks and months that I was with him, but nothing perhaps more special than the idea that the least among us in our lives can teach us so many wonderful things. Sometimes those individuals that society pushes to the side and marginalizes have great lessons for us. As we listen to the words of the gospel today, let us remind ourselves that the least among us have the greatest lessons. And let's ask ourselves, God, where are the least among us in our lives? What can we learn from them? And how is Christ speaking to us through their humility and their presence? And so we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. To him all things were made. For us men, for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sin, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Mindful that our God hears the prayers of his people, we place our petitions before him. For all those baptized in the church, may God strengthen us in proclaiming the kingdom of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our diocese, that God will abundantly bless our bishops, priests, deacons, and religious. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, may God bless them with strength and wisdom in supporting policies that uplift families. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who mourn the loss of a loved one, may God's enduring love and mercy and the gift of faith bring them consolation. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those in our midst who are struggling financially, may the Lord grant them relief and hope. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faithful departed, may they be brought to eternal peace with the Lord in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. And so gathering all our prayers into one, those spoken and those echoed in the silence of our hearts and those joining us online, we lift them up through Christ our Lord.
Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive with favor, Lord, we pray, the offerings of your people, that what we profess with devotion and faith may be ours through these heavenly mysteries. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, to your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. For the time that he was betrayed and entered willingly to his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and the eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in memory of me. Our mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. There Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may all be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout our world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Douglas, our Bishop, and all the clergy and religious and indeed all people everywhere. Remember also our brothers and sisters, those who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with Mary, the mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, the blessed apostles, Saint Mary and Cope, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. 
Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. And so we pray the words that our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. <coughs> On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Not temptation, but deliver us, we Lord. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may always be free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace, I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. And so we pray. Almighty God, raise up those who renew with the sacrament that we may come to possess your redemption both in mystery and in the manner of our lives. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. 
The Almighty God, consider to bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is then to go in peace and love to serve the Lord. Yeah. Hey. 